Hello, my fellow Nigerians. The way we practice politics in Nigeria is quite different from the way we practice politics in other Western countries. You see, they say the big cock will not allow the small water one to, to crow. You see, uh, Obaseki and their comrade Philip Shaibu, they've been together all this while. I see no reason why Obaseki will not allow a Shaibu to rise. You see, the way we do things in Nigeria is quite different from the way others do. Comrade Philip Shaibu, the Edo State Deputy Governor, has been at uh, loggerhead with uh, his uh, principal, Governor Governor Baseki, since uh, he made known his ambition to succeed the governor. The judgment of an uh, Abuja Federal High Court annulling his uh, impeachment was thus a climax of the tussle between him and the governor. In this interview with the uh, Daily Trust, Comrade Shaibu gives reasons why his uh, case reinforces call for the delineation of uh, the roles of uh, deputy governors. He also speaks on his uh, reconciliation with uh, his uh, SY political uh, leader, Senator Adam Soshomale, among other issues. Issues surrounding your position as uh, the deputy governor of Edo State highlights the fundamental challenges in the relationship between governors and uh, their deputies, particularly regarding constitutional rules. Do you believe these issues reinforce the need for constitutional uh, amendments? Absolutely. For us to strengthen democracy and ensure that the institutions are respected and given the authority to deserve, we must establish laws that clearly define and they assign rules to all players. Nigeria's democracy is still maturing compared to Western democracy. We are in a transitional phase towards a consolidating through democracy. To achieve this, we need law that can check anti-democratic elements. Who poses as Democrats? Unfortunately, Governor Gordon Basek exemplifies, exemplifies uh, this uh, neg negative influence on democracy, which I find deeply painful. When we initially supported Obaseki, we believed that uh, bringing in someone refined from the private sector would elevate Edo politics, moving it towards uh, westernization and uh, civility. However, I have uh, come to realize that uh, it is not about the sector one comes from, but about the individual's uh, character. Obaseki's action have uh, shown that uh, personal integrity is crucial in democratic uh, governance, and uh, we need a uh, stringent laws to check such behavior. This is why I am calling on the National Assembly to urgently amend the Constitution to clearly distinguish the roles of the governor and the deputy governor. Why there cannot be two governors in this state? The deputy governor's security and the responsibility should be or not be under the governor's uh, control. The deputy governor should have uh, institutionalized rules beyond clear charing boundary. Committees similar to how uh, the vice president chairs the uh, economic council at the federal level. Additionally, the deputy governors over heads and the security votes should be independence of uh, the governor's control, as these are often used to render deputies redundant. 
in my experience, Governor Baseki lacks public sector management skills. He approaches governance with a private sector uh, mentality, believing he can hire and fire at will, which is not how the public sector operates. He has dismissed workers and uh, removed names from bureaus without due process, violating civil uh, service rules. His uh, disregard for the law and the uh, civil service uh, procedures is uh, concerning. As the deputy governor, I am committed to pursuing these necessary constitutional uh, amendments to ensure better governance. Given how you and the governor Obaseki started in 2016 and uh, how the relationship was uh, solidified in 2020. At what point did the fallout begin? The fallout began when Governor Baseki started treating Edo State as a private entity, almost as if it were his uh, personal company. With him as the chief managing director, he began to behave as uh, though he alone could decide who should uh, become the board chairman of uh, Edo State, essentially acting as if he were a godfather. Despite our collective fight against godfatherism, the struggle against godfatherism started with uh, Adam Soshumole and was further consolidated by Obaseki himself in 2020 when he declared that if he ever attempted to become a godfather, he should be dealt with accordingly. Now he cannot impose a sway a good dialogue. He's a business partner as a godfather figure in Edo State. We have uh, abolished godfatherism and uh, it will never take root here again. The turning point came when I decided to contest for the office of the governor of Edo State, Obaseki informed me that uh, he had his own plans, especially to support Asu Igodalo. I made it clear that uh, Edo State is not a business entity. It is a public office governed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, where everyone has the right to contest. My insistence on running for office led to the breakdown of our relationship. At the beginning, was there any gentleman's agreement that you should would uh, succeed Governor Obaseki after his eight years tenure? No, we never hold, had any discussion on the agreement about succession. In Edo State, we are never had a we have never had a formal uh, conference or assembly where zoning or succession plans were laid out. It has always been open to everyone. It was in that spirit of uh, openness that I decided to contest. One of the reasons I wanted to run for governor is that I noticed significant uh, gaps that uh, needed to be addressed and the uh, Obaseki was not willing to tackle them. I am a practical, uh, prat I'm a practical, protects driven uh, person and I felt that uh, we could uh, manage the situation until his tenure ended. Once he was out, I intended to step in and fix those issues. Your decision to the APC a few weeks before the election has raised air, air bruise. Some say this is your attempt to remain in the limelight. What is your reason? Limelight? I don't understand that clearly. I have always been in the limelight from my secondary school days. I was the president of a NAS, and even before that, from the day I entered, I entered the University of Jos, I became a class representative. Three months later, I contested to be a member of the parliament. 
representing Abuja Hostel, the most populous and the popular, popular hostel on the campus. And I won. In my second year, I became the welfare secretary of the student union. And in my third year, I was nominated as a, at the Nancy Convention in Casina, Allah, Bedway State, to be the coordinator, coordinator of the Abacha Must Go campaign in Zonsi, which included all the states in the North, Central, and Northeast region. In my fourth year, I became the number one student leader in Nigeria, the president of over 40 million Nigerian students. Seven years after my university days, I contested for a seat in the House of Assembly, and I won. I served two years as the majority leader of the Edo State Assembly, with 104 motions and over 90 bills to my credit. Records that uh, still stand. I later served in the House of Representatives and was drafted to become the Deputy Governor in 2016 to add political value to the ticket, something Obaseki lacked. When it comes to relevance, my God's grace, by God's grace, I have made myself available and I have been fortunate, fortunate to stay relevant. I'm a grassroots uh, politician and at an activist who is deeply concerned about the welfare of our people and the strength of uh, our constitution. Strong institutions ensure that uh, whether you are in office or retired, your welfare is secure. That is why I have always advocated for strong institutions as opposed to the short-sighted measures taken by those who only seek to amass wealth and build estates for their children. For me, this is not my calling. And I will continue to fight against anti-democratic forces that seek to undermine the will of the people. My prayer is that individuals like Obaseki never find success in Edo or Nigeria, Nigerian politics again, as that is the only way to strengthen our democracy. Looking at how you parted away in the build up to the 2020 governorship election and the bad blood since then was your reconciliation with former Governor Damso Shimon, a marriage of a convenience or a genuine reconciliation. It was not a marriage of convenience. The move for reconciliation was supposed to happen immediately after the 2020 election. My wife insisted on it. We initi initiated the process and I approached the governor saying that Comrade Oshomele was still our guy. We disagree with him over certain issues, but now that uh, God had uh, given us victory, it was important to reconcile because we couldn't simply dismiss a comrade from our political lives. The response I got from the governor was shocking. And when my wife tried to speak with his wife, the reaction was even worse. The things she, Obaseki's wife, said was were so hurtful that I won't disclose them publicly. As a lawyer deputy governor, I didn't want to be seen reconciling with a comrade why my boss refused so that I slowed down the reconciliation process. However, when the opportunity eventually arose, I was excited and happy about it. I don't know Baseki as well as I know comrade Oshomoli. I have almost 45 years of relationship with him. And while we initially disagree, I later realized that uh, what the elder statesman saw in the situation, we couldn't see. So it wasn't a marriage of a convenience. It was a genuine reconciliation. No one begged me to reconcile. 
I sought it out myself. When I kneeled down, it was out of my own uh, conviction that this was the right thing to do. The only person I can attribute my decision to reconcile with comrade to is my wife, no one else. With your support of uh, the APC candidate, is this the end of the journey for you as a far as a governing a do state is concerned? The moment I became deputy governor, I placed my political ambitions in God's hand. I have always sought God's guidance in every section I have contested, right from my school days. Becoming deputy governor was a significant milestone for me because I realized that uh, in the executive arm, I could impact lives and uh, bring about change in the, my community more effectively than in the legislative arm. So from 2016, I've entrusted my political ambition to God and, the, he, and the, his direction. Oh, my people, my people, this is what we are saying concerning all these politicians. Tomorrow, they will be friends. The other day round, they will become enemies. So there is no permanent friend in politics and there is no permanent friend in um, enemy in politics. My people, my people, what do you suggest? In your comment section, other comment and uh, uh, subscribe, share, love and like. God bless Nigeria. Thanks you and God bless. Amen.